welcome to another episode of High Impact Garage. It's Patrick here, and we are working on this Jeep Compass that came in. So the Compass came in with this light illuminated. It looks like a lightning bolt between a couple of uh, col uh, parentheses, or whatever they are, colons, and uh, yeah, parentheses. And over here, we have the check engine light illuminated. The customer's concern is that the vehicle came, uh, the vehicles went into a point where it was just not idling well. Uh, there was almost no throttle response, and uh, there was a whole ton of other performance-related issues. Like the vehicle was completely undrivable. We've gone ahead and uh, pulled codes on this, and so we've got a P0121, which is the throttle position sensor one performance, a P0123, which is the throttle position sensor circuit is high, a P2110, which is the electronic throttle control system was in a forced RPM range, so basically they were keeping the RPM at a certain point, um, P2118, which was the throt electronic throttle control motor current, bank 1, and P2135, which is throttle position sensor 1 and 2 correlation. So now if we look at this, we've got throttle position sensor 1 performance, throttle position sensor 1 circuit high, and throttle position sensor circuit 1 of 2 correlation. Those two, those three all correlate with each other. These two right here are likely all related, um, but let's go from there. Something you need to know about electronic throttle control systems is that there are two accelerator pedal position sensors and there are two throttle position sensors. So now, the reason we have two is so that if there is a problem with the system, that uh, we can turn around and we can identify that there may be like a range issue. So like if the, we lose signal on sensor one, then sensor two is there for us to have uh, to correlate. And also we can look at both of them and we can look to see if there is in fact actually maybe a signal dropout or something of that nature. If there's a problem or a correlation issue, it's supposed to force the vehicle into a low power mode. And of course the same also goes for the accelerator pedal position sensor. If there's a if uh, there's a correlation on that where hey we it demands wide open throttle but the other one says no, um, then it's also going to give us a uh, break us into a fail safe and a reduced power mode. And the whole reason we do that is because we're not we want to make sure that we're not demanding this thing to go into wide open throttle or a higher load than what's actually being demanded. Uh, so if there is actually an issue. Uh, we don't want the car to go out of control. All right, so we're over here at the computer looking at Identifix and some known repair issues related to the codes like 2110. Uh, most of the time, the throttle body, the throttle, yeah, most of the time of like thousands of repairs. Uh, 1,144 throttle body. 213 the throttle body on this one, um, 2110, 2118, another throttle body issue, uh, 123, uh, PO123, uh, the throttle motor, the throttle assembly, um, 18 is throttle body for this one right here for 2118, and then similar vehicles, similar issues. Um, if you lo look again, the throttle position sensor, uh, performance, and such, those are all jiving with what I have on the scan tool. Alright, so here, here's the picture of the throttle body that's on the vehicle. And if you look at it, you've got a single connector here. And uh, that's what that connector looks like right there. And then uh, the other picture, if it'll come up basically that's the unit itself from the backside and so this piece right here the TPS and the throttle motor so the mo throttle motor mounts inside of here the gear drive and then there's a TPS in here um, there's 
the TPS is not serviceable separate from the throttle body. So outside of there being an issue going into that connector uh, where there's a wiring possibly, this throttle body is likely going to need to be replaced as it has to be serviced as one piece. Now I've seen on certain models where they'll mount a throttle position sensor separately and you can, if there are throttle position sensor codes, then you can replace that while leaving the rest of the, the body. But in this particular case, this is probably, you know, you just, uh, it, like a lot of cases, this whole unit has to be replaced. All right, so now that we are armed with that information, I'm gonna go do some checking here and check some wiring and do some circuit checks just to verify that in fact, we don't have an issue with the harness on this car. That sometimes can be the case. So we're gonna go check that out, and if all of that checks out fine, then I'm gonna get on the uh, get on the horn with the customer and get approval to change the throttle body. All right, so we're looking at this car now, and uh, there's the throttle body down there. And uh, we check the wire harness. Check the harness. Harness is fine. No issues on that. The connector does seat just fine. So I'm not worried about that, but if you look at the throttle body, so we've checked this out. There's the throttle body down there. The wiring connector is down there. That connector's fine. But if you look in the throttle body, you can see that kind of line of black. And that's actually where most of the problem comes in. These things get dirty on the inside. And uh, when they get dirty, it makes it throws them out of calibration and then it also puts an extra load on the throttle motor the motors also wear out and so that's that's it's a common problem to have to replace these common issue where they just fail of their own so now uh, now what we're waiting on is parts we're just gonna sit here and wait for parts uh, we've got authorization to go ahead and replace this throttle motor uh, we're going to do some inspecting on some other things, and uh, we'll, once we have parts in hand, then we'll get it all back together again and hopefully uh, get them back on the road happy. Alright, so here we've got the old throttle body out, the new throttle body ready to go in. The old throttle body makes a noise. It's actually loose on the inside, so it's part of the mechanism. Uh, it's not incredibly dirty as you can see but it is soaked in oil um, so there is some other issues going on there with this engine but there is something failed inside of that unit because if you take the new one it doesn't really make any noise so we're going to put this new one on and get the uh, idle learned for it and and I think this is definitely uh, our problem. So I've gone ahead and got the throttle body in, now i got the scan tool hooked up, and we're going to go ahead and do the first thing, which is clear codes. Any of the new codes, the, any codes that set during this process need to be erased. Alright, so the next thing in my, in my setup here that I need to do is reset the ECU and clear the adaptive. So I went ahead and, well, reset memory, which is clearing adaptives. So I went ahead and reset the adaptives, now we're going to do the throttle Elect, learn electronic throttle control. So I'm going to click on that. 
and it says you can use this feature to learn throttle position voltages and accelerator pedal position. And it's establishing communication with the vehicle. Press and hold down the accelerator to the floor. Okay. And then hold down the accelerator strongly to the floor. Okay, release the accelerator pedal. And now we're just going to let it do its thing. And it's blinking some lights and stuff, and some warning lights are up, but that's okay. That's going to do that. So just let it do its thing. In a second, it'll give us the all clear, probably. All right, so after a little bit of waiting, Learner Electronic Throttle Control has passed. So we're going to hit OK on there. And the next step is probably just to fire this thing up and see what it does. All right, so now we've gone through that reset. Let's go ahead and crank this over and see what goes on. All right. And now it's starting to idle down the way we want it to. Um, yeah. Yeah, so here we are. We've got the desired angle and the actual angle and then our RPM is desired target of 800 and we're just right within 10 RPM of that and in fact actually we're able to control it even lower as it tries to as it warms up so the next step now is to take it for a test drive and go for a run and make sure that there are no further codes and make sure that in fact that the throttle behaves properly throughout the driving range. Alright so I am back from the road test and everything went well. No codes. The vehicle drives exactly the way I expect it to and want it to. So that's all that's we're gonna call it a good. Um, just a word of note something to think about at the end of all this when you are dealing with diagnosing a problematic one, uh, drive by wire throttle control um, and you're having issues that come up but you don't have any codes present you can't duplicate it one of the keys uh, if there is a problem with the throttle body will be how well it is maintaining the idle so the you're looking at desired angle and desired idle speed and if you're not really tracking it well like if it's plus or minus 50 rpm kind of sagging around on that uh, point you're going to run into a situation where it's going to idle poorly um, or, or it just be the precursor to a throttle control issue now it may it may seem like it idles well enough and the customer may not complain about that but if it's if it's if it's hanging around like 10 to 15 plus or minus the RPM point and it's just kind of hanging there it's usually okay but if once it's outside of that window then you're gonna start having problems so I hope this was helpful and I hope that uh, you know have a good uh, have yourself a good repair and uh, we'll see you the next time on the high impact garage show